Hello, welcome to lesson three of Choreography Basics. Today we're gonna to be talking about theme and inspiration. And I'm gonna be teaching you a little bit about how to research your theme and inspiration. If you've participated in lesson one, you're able to discover some of the impulses that you have when you dance. You might want to move a certain way. There are words to help us describe those movements and those words can also be found in inspiring parts of nature. So I'm gonna say a couple of words for you here. Swinging. Imagine swinging, using your arms to swing, using your legs to swing, using your head to swing, maybe even letting your hair down and using your hair. When you are swinging, you can actually learn a little bit about how to make dances about swinging by looking at swing sets, right? You can also look at other things that swing. You know, once something has been pressed into motion, it can swing back and forth. What about that inspires you to be able to create your movement with it? Another word would be collapse. Imagine that you are swinging your leg and then you're collapsing. What does the collapse mean? Have you looked at collapsed buildings? Have you looked at different kinds of balloons that collapse on themselves? Do they immediately let the air out or do they just like a pinprick start to melt as they collapse? Are you going to be collapsing large or small? Is the collapse more of a discovery of mood and you have to portray to the audience, similarly to perhaps Romeo and Juliet, the discovery of tragic news, that collapse had to come internally first and then it was portrayed to the audience through the actual collapsing of movement. So another word that you can use would be sustained. Is something sustained, meaning that it is um, melting and holding on just a little bit longer before it goes down. A sustained movement would be like a feather falling in the sky. It's sustained by the wind, the wind holds it up, gravity pulls it down, they work back and forth with each other until eventually that leaf or that feather have arrived on the ground. Perhaps percussive. Percussive is when you're moving super sharp and there's a bit of a beat to it. So you can have rhythmic claps, stamps, stomps, flicks, dabs. Those movements can show up all of a sudden in a dance. So some of these ways of moving are things that you can research. Other words are vibrating, balanced, moving energy. So I'd like for you to go ahead and swing your legs and take forward steps. Then take a sustained arm stretch. A few percussive jumps to the side. Imagine that your feet start vibrating on the floor and then you collapse backwards with a low walk. Suspend your breathing and then finish your phrase. So in that guided exploration, you're able to see a lot of different ways to move. Every time you do it, it would be different until you choreograph it and memorize it, do it over and over again. I'd love for you to go ahead and look into nature and take a few pictures of whatever inspires you for your theme. You're beginning now to get a picture of what you want to do for your final project. What's it gonna be about? What will you have to actually research? If you're going to be telling a story, which parts of the story are you telling? When we see Cinderella, there's like 140 different variations of what the story could be. Each choreographer has taken their own liberty to be able to tell the story the way that they want. You can pick a kid's book, you can pick a hot topic, something that's very important that you really want everybody to understand. is your voice. Your impulse equals 
the space you use, the timing you use, and the shapes. The shapes that are around you, the shapes that you make with your body. So it's a good idea to really research the details of what you want to say so that at the end of your project, even if this is a children's story, it's one that makes sense to the audience. 